Right now, twisted metal and wooden frames show the aftermath of a twister in Dane County. Damage now covered in wet, heavy snow. Plus, more than a month and still more questions and answers. How Quadron Wilson's family is taking their fight to the Capitol tonight. And we're following the latest news out of Ukraine as Russian forces continue to amp up their attacks on residential areas. And the U.S. is considering even stricter sanctions. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Well, good evening and thanks for having us in. The last two days have not been kind to people who live in and around Stoughton. First, an EF1 tornado, one of the earliest ever reported in Wisconsin, ripped through barns and homes in an area just south of the city. Today, several inches of snow added insult to injury. The city's mayor declared a state of emergency today, thanking the community for stepping up to help with the cleanup. Work that just got a lot harder due to the weather. Photojournalist Jim Rader begins our coverage from there. The power went out and I was trying to go to sleep and she walked in the bedroom and she, the power's out and she just said, well, the power's out. So I guess we'll just sit in here for a minute. We can't do anything else. And then next thing you know, it was the, everything, the, I mean, it just roared like a son of a gun. Windows are shaking. Yeah, windows were shaking. Doors were slamming open and, or shut, I guess. And next thing you know, we heard windows popping and two by four come flying through the window. It tore off the southeast corner of my house, the roof and toppled my windmill over and the back of my storage shed. 150 years almost? 150 years has been in the home family or whatnot and lived across the road for six, seven years and then just moved over here last spring. But luckily the cattle are fine, but obviously we got to take preventative measurements to uh, you know, hardware problems and metal and stepping on nails and uh, tin and all that good stuff. <laughs> Figure out what we're gonna rebuild and keep farming. <laughs> That's all you can do, just keep moving. Thanks to the family, or all the family and friends and neighbors and everyone that's helping. I don't <laughs> you can't think Couldn't of enough, without, yeah. Couldn't do it without them. Yep, yep. Well, snow caused a messy morning commute today, but tomorrow looks much improved. Let's get a look at your certified most accurate forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canulty is on the weather patio. Gary? Well, Brady, we went from severe weather Saturday night to snow uh, last night and this morning. I ju just want to say real quickly about the, uh, the Stoughton tornado. There was no warning out for it. I was working Saturday night. There wasn't much of a rotation that we could see on radar, but it was just a line of storms coming through. And every once in a while, you can get a, a quick storm to spin up into a, a tornado in a situation like that. So. So it's always, you know, good to keep a weather eye to the sky. Well, uh, you can clearly see the snow on the ground from uh, last night's snow uh, across Iowa and into Wisconsin. The skies are clearing out to the west, but the accumulating snow has moved well to our east. Uh, still some lake effect snows across parts of Michigan, but southern Wisconsin right now is precipitation free and the skies are actually starting to clear out to the west. Low temperatures this morning were in the upper 20s, cold enough for snow across southern Wisconsin. High temperatures only went up a couple of degrees. Here in Madison, we got up to about freezing and right now we're back down to around 30 degrees. Wind chills right now are in the upper teens and lower 20s. There's a little bit of a breeze out here. But by tomorrow morning, with skies clearing out and that fresh snow cover, we're down to about 15 degrees. Tomorrow, look for a sunny day. It'll be chilly with a high of 38. And I'll take a look at a forecast that includes a little more snow as we head into Thursday. Thank you, Gary. And stay up to date on the latest weather conditions on our first Warren Forecast weather app. It has hourly forecasts, road conditions, and the latest radar. You can download it for free in your phone's app store. Just search WIS see weather. Family and friends of Quadron Wilson are tired of seeing little to no information in the 32 days since he was hurt in an officer-involved shooting last month. So today, a group supporting Wilson went to the Capitol with a message for local leaders, hoping to push the sheriff's office into releasing more details. Our Brad Hamilton joins us now to show us that message. Brad? Brady at around three this afternoon. Members of uh, Quadron Wilson's family and supporters came to the Capitol to hand deliver this letter to elected officials. Now specifically the Lieutenant Governor, the Attorney General and the Chairwoman of the Wisconsin Black Caucus received a copy. In that letter, supporters had a list of demands, some of which included arresting and charging the state DCI agents that they say are responsible for shooting Wilson. Next, make this investigation more transparent and last to allow Wilson to go back to UW High hospital for treatment for which his family says he has an infection. And he don't know nothing, we don't know nothing, he's in pain. 
the police are giving us the runaround. I mean, it's 34 days. Mentally, he's messed up. Mentally, we messed up, too. Period. That was Wilson's father who says he is beyond frustrated at this point. And coming up tonight at 10, we're going to hear more from Wilson's family and supporters, as well as what information the sheriff's office has released. Brady. Thank you, Brad. A new F5-3 teens are in critical condition after a shooting outside of a school in Iowa. Police say the suspects have been detained. The shooting happened on the grounds of East High School in Des Moines. The school went under lockdown and police have shut down streets near the scene. It's unclear what actually led to that shooting. The search for a suspect continues after Madison police say two people were injured after an alleged drive-by shooting early Sunday morning. Officers were sent to a hospital at about 1 a.m. after two men arrived with gunshot wounds. The victims, 34 and 35 years old, say the shooting happened on Odana Road after they left a business on Grand Canyon Drive. A suspect vehicle allegedly pulled up next to the victims and opened fire. Officers reportedly found shattered glass and eight shell casings at the scene. So far, officers haven't arrested anyone. Russia continues to intensify its attacks on residential areas of Ukraine. Meanwhile, the UN says more than 1.7 million refugees have left the violence. Isabel Rosales has the details. As anti-war rallies mount in Russia, Russian troops push in on key Ukrainian cities. The goal? Bombard cities into submission. Дочка погибла в коляске. Меня вытащили из двух луков, вытащили из под завалов. On the ground, Ukraine accusing Russia of violating a ceasefire agreement to allow for civilian evacuations. A Russian airstrike in a suburb of Kyiv Sunday killed an evacuating Ukrainian family, including children. This is murder. Deliberate murder. Ukraine's president repeatedly calling on the U.S. and NATO to establish a no-fly zone over Ukraine, both rejecting this option. The no-fly zone, that means that if uh, Russian planes violate the zone that's declared, we shoot them down. And that runs the, uh, the considerable risk of creating a direct conflict between uh, our countries uh, and Russia, and thus a wider war. The West moving to counter Russia. Along the border, an airfield is serving as a weapons hub, according to a senior Defense Department official. A senior U.S. official saying the U.S. and NATO so far supplying Ukraine with nearly 20,000 anti-tank and anti-air missiles. God will not forgive. Not today, not tomorrow, never. And instead of forgiveness, there will be judgment. In Washington, Isabel Rosales. Meanwhile, American officials have identified three areas where the U.S. could soon take action. They include a ban on Russian oil imports, a declaration of war crimes against Russia, and helping deliver Polish fighter jets to Ukraine. And with all that's unfolding in Ukraine right now, new information is constantly coming in. You can find the latest updates in a special section on channel3000.com. Just scroll down to Crisis in Ukraine on our homepage, and you'll also find a link on how you can help the people of Ukraine. We first told you her story in December after going public about her sexual assault and how she says the system mishandled it in the aftermath. Now an Oregon teen says that the system has failed her twice. Investigative reporter Naomi Coles explains. When I first shared Brie Opplinger's story, Oregon police had reopened the three-year-old investigation into her assault by another student at the time. Her story then, the officer had told her she couldn't press charges and had made inappropriate comments to her. Her story today, the system has once again failed her after they investigated and failed to substantiate Brie's complaint against the officer for that conduct. It's been horrible. I, I don't think that people realize how much it hurts to like be traumatized and then you know be re-traumatized over and over again and then just seeing that he's still there and that nothing's been done about it is just really it's heartbreaking 
She's talking about the officers still being at the department after her complaint and multiple students telling her after her YouTube video that they had similar experiences with him. I reached out to Oregon police for a response to all this. They sent me a statement nearly identical to the one three months ago talking about how they support victims but encourage them to report as soon as possible. Coming up at six o'clock, Bree is sitting down with us for the first time and we're exploring how schools across our area are re-examining their approaches to handling student sexual violence. Naomi, thank you. Restaurants and small businesses in Wisconsin are getting some extra help as they work to recover from the COVID pandemic. Governor Tony Evers signed two bills into law at Cooper's Tavern today. One is designed to assure businesses federal COVID relief money they receive is exempt from state taxes. And the other increases the amount of ordinary income that may be offset by capital losses from $500 to $3,000. Both bills passed with bipartisan support. We received so many notes and notices from various businesses. What a difference it meant for them. And uh, so, Governor, uh, you certainly are, are taking a huge step here today to focus specifically on the Restaurant Association. The governor says the legislation is one way to help local restaurants and bars, but another way you can help is by stopping by your favorite local business or restaurant to show your support. State legislative leaders joined the Democratic Party of Wisconsin today to discuss the positive impact Governor Evers' budget surplus proposal would have on Wisconsin residents. The governor's plan directs taxpayer dollars back to Wisconsin families now to help them pay bills and address rising costs. Ben Winkler, the chair of Wisconsin's Democratic Party, says giving the money back to the people of Wisconsin will also help the state's economy. He also says the GOP is holding taxpayer dollars hostage. If Wisconsinite's money just collects dust for the next year, it'll be on Republicans to explain why they've chosen to put their self-serving political agenda above helping families put food on the table. Anna Kelly, a Wisconsin GOP spokesperson, released a statement on Evers' surplus plan, saying Republicans support long-term tax reform, not made-up proposals meant to buy Democrats votes and mask their record of failure. Coming up next at five, deadly tornadoes tore through several Iowa counties. Seven people are dead following the wild weather just southwest of Wisconsin. We'll meet some people affected by the deadly twisters coming up next at five. And later, the family of a missing lacrosse student is offering a reward for information that helps them find him. Details coming up at six. And prices tumbled again on Wall Street with investors nervous about oil and the situation in Ukraine. The Dow Industrials dropped 797 points. The Nasdaq was off 482 points or more than 3.5%. The S&P 500 gave up 127 points or 3%. suffer from erectile dysfunction? Now there's great news. Peak Performance for Men will help you regain your performance and confidence naturally. Peak Performance for Men uses an advanced form of acoustic wave therapy, clinically shown to open up and regrow blood vessels, restoring normal and natural function ability where it counts most. There are no needles, no surgery, and best of all, no pain. Call now and receive an ultrasound. Your initial consultation, all for free, in over $300 value. Call Peak Performance for Men today. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Well, today we're gonna see one for ourselves and let you be the judge. It's called Plexiderm and lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real and I'm so excited. We even have a video that the viewers can watch while you and I talk so they can actually see how this works. And you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging and all he uses is a small amount on a clean dry face and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. Even watching the video, this is a real, uh, it's a model, but it's a real guy with real bags underneath his eyes. And I did this to my father. We were at home. I had the timer on and we were screaming. Four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> These lines bother me. They really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. 
feels great, looks even better. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. So this would be a daily thing or just when you wanna like get rid of the bags? And yeah. you would I mean, morning it, routine. it absolutely could be a daily thing, but the way you want to do it is you want to have a clean, dry face, you use a small amount because it's so powerful, apply it underneath your eyes, fine line wrinkles, forehead lines. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look years younger, this is it. At our $14.95 price, it's the best way to try Plexiderm and see it work for yourself after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. We investigate a sexual assault on an Oregon teen, why she says the case was mishandled, and we're looking at how schools are now rethinking their sexual violence policies. Tonight at 6. If you thought building a new home would be more affordable this year, think again. It's just insane right now. Eric Pronke talks to local builders to find out what's driving up the bottom line on home construction. Thursday on News 3 Now at 6. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Deadly tornadoes tore through central Iowa over the weekend, killing at least seven people. Laura Podesta has the details. An estimated EF3 tornado ripped through Madison County, Iowa Saturday with winds reaching over 200 miles per hour. Homes and lives were destroyed. Three members of one family, the father and a sister and brother ages five and two are among the dead. On this side of the fireplace, we had all of our kids toys. Shannon Brown's family was spared in the storm. Her home was not. Now hundreds in the Des Moines community are coming out to offer support and clean up. You know, you really realize who, you know, cares about you. 50 miles southeast of Des Moines, Lucas County was also hit by a twister. Volunteers, including construction crews, worked through the weekend to help people get back on their feet. This is what I love about rural Iowa is that everybody comes together when something happens. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds toured the damage and got emotional talking about the resiliency of the community. I'm just, I'm proud of Iowans and the way that they always step up and respond and I'm so proud of the local leaders and uh, the coordination that takes place every time we have an emergency uh, disaster like this. It's estimated more than 50 homes in central Iowa were either damaged or destroyed by the storms. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Meanwhile, the National Weather Service is trying to figure out why tornado warnings in Iowa were delayed in some areas. The Weather Service confirmed the lead time for warnings averaged 20 minutes during Saturday's tornadoes, with some warnings being delayed as they were widely sent out to the public. The warnings that experienced delays included those in Madison County, which was hit hardest by the storms. Experts are concerned people may have had less time to prepare and take shelter. The National Weather Service says engineers are working to determine the root cause. And Gary, you say it all the time, it's best to have multiple ways to help you be prepared for something like that. For exactly that reason. Now, the problem appears to be with the uh, National Weather Service communication system uh, would, had, had delayed the warnings. They had to go through a different type of processing. And the warnings, even though they were issued 20 minutes in advance, didn't get to people until anywhere from about uh, 10 to 15 minutes in advance. But a lot of people that were affected were people who just depended on their phones to get the warning. And so that's why sirens are a part of the system. No weather radios, you would have gotten the, the warning instantly. So again, have multiple ways of getting the warning. We talk about this during severe weather season. You know, you need to get ready and get set when there's a watch issued or severe weather is already in the forecast. You don't want to waste valuable time waiting for the warning when you get to that go stage where it, you may only have literally seconds or a couple of minutes to seek sh safe shelter. So just keep that in mind as we get into severe weather season. Around here, we went from severe weather on Saturday to snow last night, and some of the snow totals range from seven inches in Platteville to two inches in Milwaukee. But these amounts, you know, we had a lot of variability. Even though we had that seven inch amount in Platteville, there were a couple other reports near Platteville that only had like four to five inches of snow. So because of the heavy, wet nature of the snow, some of it compacted, and depending on when the observations were taken, that uh, determined the, the snowfall amounts. But most areas received anywhere from two to four inches, and a few places a little bit more than that. Three things you need to know in the 
forecast with that snow cover on the ground now temperatures going to stay cold for a while. We do have additional snow in the forecast for Thursday and Thursday night and then dry weather this weekend will be cold on Saturday, but we should turn milder on Sundays winds pick up out of the south on Doppler track. You can still see some snow showers up in Door County and far northeastern Wisconsin. The rest of the state is clear, but take a look at this. These are the severe weather reports from Saturday. Notice where those tornado reports were uh, down toward Des Moines and into central Iowa. Now look at the snow cover. They got hit with snow overnight last night like we did. So complicating the cleanup is snow over the, uh, the tornado damage. And you can see that snow cover has expanded across much of the Midwest, up in uh, parts of upper Michigan, still about two feet of snow on the ground. And notice how it's affecting temperatures. Over that fresh snow cover, temperatures are mainly in the 20s and 30s compared to the 60s, 70s, and 80s that we saw late last week. On weather track, the jet stream still coming in from the west. A little bit of cold air coming in from the north, but we're not seeing a big, strong push of cold can Canadian air. It's just a more active uh, pattern. The warm air is down to the south and showers and thunderstorms, even the threat for some severe weather and flooding over the southeastern part of the country today. Uh, to our northwest, there's another cold front that will drop in over the next couple of days, keeping the weather on the chilly side here. Uh, right now, skies are clearing out to the west. Temperatures, 20s and 30s for the most part, but you can see compared to 24 hours ago, our temperatures are about the same. There's a little bit of a warm up to the west, but only by a couple of degrees and will probably be a couple of degrees warmer for tomorrow. In fact, look for a high temperature tomorrow of 38 degrees with mostly sunny skies. And as we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, we drop back to 34 on Wednesday and 27 on Thursday. That's where we have some snow in the forecast. Right now it's looking like a 1 to 2 inch accumulation, mainly south of Madison. And then uh, we stay cold for Friday and Saturday before temperatures start to warm up for next week. We're back into the upper 30s and lower to middle 40s with some rain chances Monday and then again Wednesday and Thursday. As we check out first warrant traffic right now, not seeing too many problems. There's the view of the Beltline. At Stoughton Road, there is a delay on the uh, eastbound or the westbound belt line. Uh, there was some kind of an incident there uh, near the shoulder, so you can see a little bit of a delay uh, near Stoughton Road. Otherwise, the belt line moving along pretty well, as well as the major highways in and around Dane County. Eastbound on the belt line, a 22 minute trip from University Avenue to the interstate, 15 minutes going back in the westbound direction. Heading out of Madison, no problems from the belt line to Janesville on I 3990. It's a quick trip today on middle to, uh, from Middleton to Sauk City on US 12, downtown to Sun Prairie, East Washington Avenue, and US 151. That's a 17 minute trip at your news street now first warrant traffic. Thanks, Gary. Madison street crews were out today clearing snow from the city's main roads. Officials did not declare a snow emergency, but they're asking you to move parked vehicles off the streets if possible. Plow crews could be out for another few hours, so they're asking drivers to be patient. Make certain you're giving them space to do the work. Don't crowd them. Don't tailgate them. Don't try to cut in front of them because they're driving slow. You know, these are several ton vehicles that aren't nearly as nimble as passenger vehicles. So you kind of dart in front of them and stop quick. That could be a problem. Um, so stay alert, stay slow, stay patient out there. Many roads are already cleared, but drivers may find some slippery spots. So be careful if you're heading out tonight. Also, if tomorrow is your trash collection day, the city is asking you not to leave your bins in the street for pickup. Coming up, a closer look at the state of the coronavirus pandemic as cases continue to decline across the U.S. Three Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Here at TSR, we transform outdated or damaged basement floors into beautiful, functional, tough floors in just one day. Hi, I'm Joey with TSR Concrete Coatings, and we don't just simply coat over your old floor. We repair all the cracks, apply the base coat and chip, and then seal it with our own proprietary sealant that will never chip or peel. Our coatings are ridiculously easy to clean and will not be damaged by spills or standing water. All of our coatings are covered by our exclusive lifetime warranty so you can rest assured that your beautiful new basement floor coating will last. And from now until March 15th, we're offering 15% off your basement floor coating. This promotion also applies to any interior commercial coating project. Visit the website or call the number below for your new floor today. One day floor. Living with metastatic breast cancer 
means being relentless because every day matters. And having more of them is possible with Fresenio, the only one of its kind proven to help you live significantly longer when taken with Fulvestrant, regardless of menopause status. Fresenio plus Fulvestrant is for HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer that has progressed after hormone therapy. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, or cause dehydration or infection. At the first sign, call your doctor, start an antidiarrheal, and drink fluids. Before taking Fresenio, tell your doctor about any fever, chills, or other signs of infection. Fresenio may cause low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening lung inflammation can occur. Tell your doctor about any new or worsening trouble breathing, cough, or chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include fatigue, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Blood clots that can lead to death have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing or heart rate, or if you are nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. Every day matters, and I want more of them. Ask your doctor about every day for Zenio. Instead of being impartial, media outlets have become advocates for the Democrat Party. They got Joe Biden, who campaigned from his basement, elected president. Now they're covering up the disastrous his policies created by attacking and censoring anyone who exposes the failures. But they can't hide inflation, higher gas prices, and rising crime from the people devastated by them. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. I will continue to ask questions and uncover the truth. Now at Menard, save big money and get 11% off everything. Give your bathroom a fresh update with a new Moen faucet. Moen faucets are available in a variety of looks and finishes to match your style. Get 11% off all Moen faucets. Keep your new bathroom clean with our great selection of Libman brooms, mops, and more. Save 11% on all Libman products. Get 11% off everything at Menards. Save big money. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. The global death toll from the coronavirus pandemic has now surpassed 6 million people, but cases and deaths continue to drop across the U.S. Deborah Alfaron has the latest. The global death toll from COVID has now stretched past 6 million people, according to Johns Hopkins University. It's a hard number to fathom because either these are deaths. This isn't just a wide range of infections. These are people who themselves and family members have lost a life that's precious. Tara Krebs lost her father Charles to COVID early in the pandemic. They're not numbers. My father was a person and he is loved and he's, he's missed. You know, I, I still get weepy, and it's almost been two years now. Since then, cases have fallen in the U.S., now down to around 45,000 a day. Hospitalizations and deaths are also much lower. In response, New York City lifted its mask mandate in schools Monday. I'm happy that my kids can go to school without a mask. I think it's a little soon, but uh, we'll see how it goes. New York City restaurants and indoor venues no longer require proof of vaccination, but you still have to wear a mask to see a Broadway show, ride the subway, or visit a medical facility. Restrictions are lifting across the U.S. Even so, a convoy of truckers is protesting COVID-related mandates. They did a couple of loops around the Beltway around Washington over the weekend, and they say they plan to talk to lawmakers on Capitol Hill later this week. I've talked to a few truckers and there are different specific goals from the mandate to general government overreach. Around the world, COVID death rates are still high, including in war-torn Ukraine. Hong Kong is also battling a sweeping and crippling COVID outbreak. These isolation centers are maxed out. I think most people in Hong Kong are very worried. Hong Kong will test all of its residents three times this month. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Arlington, Virginia. Over the weekend, Boston became the last major U.S. city to lift its indoor mask mandate. We have a final check of your first worn forecast when we come back. USA Insulation in our premium injection foam turns your cold and drafty house into a warm and toasty home. Call now and save $500 on whole home insulation. USA Insulation. Guys, if you're suffering from erectile dysfunction, Peak Performance for Men has a natural solution that can help you today. That's right. Stop wasting money on pill after pill that just masks your ED. Fix it for good. We can make the difference. Call Peak Performance for Men today. Water is one of nature's most beautiful and life-sustaining resources. At no fault of their own, 
many Wisconsin utility customers are facing a shutoff to their water service. This leaves them without the one life-giving resource we all take for granted. And those hardest hit are on fixed incomes, juggling multiple temporary jobs, or those who lost full-time jobs in sectors hardest hit by the pandemic. If someone you care about needs a hand up, your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your water, heat, and power on. If you are in danger of losing your water service, call 833-H2O-WISC, 833-426-9472. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. I can't take it anymore. It's time for a change. Oh. Buy one window, get one free? Perfect. I can change, honey. Not you. These drafty old windows. Oh. It's time for a change. Buy one window, get one free from Feldco. Buy one, get one free, and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feldco. Everyone's invited to the prom. From the creators of the Book of Mormon, Elf and the Drowsy Chaperone, The Prom is a musical comedy about big Broadway stars on a mission to change the world and the love they discover that unites them all. The Prom makes you believe in musical comedy again. So full of happiness that you think your heart is about to burst. Everyone deserves a chance to celebrate. Everyone's invited to The Prom. Get your tickets at Overture.org. As you remodel, don't toss your cabinets and appliances. Donate to Habitat Restore. Give your items a second life while proceeds build Habitat for Humanity homes. Donate today. Habitat Restore, Dane County. We're USA Insulation, and our premium injection foam turns your cold and drafty house into a warm and toasty home. Call now and save $500 on whole home insulation. USA Insulation. Temperatures right now are right around 30 degrees, give or take a degree or two. Wind chills are in the upper teens and lower 20s. But as skies clear out, look for a low of about 15 overnight, high tomorrow of 38 degrees with sunny skies. Thank you, Gary. Go Thanks, ahead. everyone, for spending this time with us. We'll see you back here at 6.